Hey everybody, I'm Dana Cowley with Epic and with me here is Deke Waters and Chance Ivy. Welcome to the Unreal Engine 4 live stream. Uh, today we're really excited to chat with you guys about a lot of news that has happened this week. Uh, if you've been on the Twitterverse over the past hour, then you've probably seen that we just made Unreal Engine 4 free for education, Yay. which we really, you know, uh, we think is going to help a lot of folks and reduce barriers to entry for, for schools and students looking to use the tech. Uh, we also launched Marketplace mm. yesterday, so now you can actually buy and sell things, which we think is uh, also going to help we? a lot of developers. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yep. And, uh, and I just returned from PAX. We had a great show out there. Um, had some really uh, talented teams in our booth, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit of that in a minute. So first things first, we're going to start off with the community spotlight. Chance has lots of stuff to show you, uh, especially since we uh, <coughs> didn't do one last week. We're going to double up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. No, we got, we got quite a few on today. So this first one here is from our buddy Matt. Um, working on a game called Hanako. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like a class-based based samurai battle game. Uh, I've watched some 1v1 stuff on it so far, but <laughs> he's, uh, some of the game modes are looking at all the way up to 16v6, so really cool stuff. I, I'm a big fan of, of online competitive games. I played a lot of chivalry, and this is much faster paced than that, which I also like too, being a Battlefield fan. So uh, really looking forward to to seeing this come out. This is his uh, pre-alpha footage that he showed off at PAX um, last week or weekend, whichever that counts as. So look for more cool stuff from this guy too. All right. So I'm going to hop out of that and on to the next one we got here is... Uh, oh, yeah. Be sure to stop the video in the other one. Oh, got it. Yeah. yeah close up that one down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a, a game called Spartan Saga that um, user uh, Rocochino is working on. It's a 2D game built with uh, paper 2D tools and blueprints only. Uh, wow. So it's, it's looking pretty neat. I, I like this video because it shows kind of some of the outlines and wireframes from his, huh. uh, from an editor and it's kind of an action platformer game. Uh, he was building it in another engine and came over and started, started it again in blueprints because of you know, how easy they were for him. He and Michael Nolan have been chatting a lot about Paper 2D and really looking forward to this. I love his little character. It's very fat princessy. <laughs> We've had some really good content coming in and being hinted at for Paper 2D, so it's really <laughs> yeah. good to see this stuff going on. Absolutely. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Yeah, when I found this, I was like, oh man, I gotta <laughs> check this out. Like, I really want to see how he's putting all this together. It's so exciting to see cool, cute little games like that being built inside of Unreal Engine 4. Oh, Definitely. yeah. I mean, Definitely. Just, you know, that wasn't even a glimmer in our eye when we unveiled Elemental, you <laughs> yeah. know? Yeah, no joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's great. I, uh, I can see this easily turning into one of those extremely difficult platforming games like Super Meat Boy. Or yes, <laughs> I was just I, thinking that when I saw the spikes. Yeah, something I grew up with. <laughs> so That's really, really good stuff. And, you know, as always, after the stream, we'll have a recap of this posted up so you can go find these videos and check them out, too. So I'm going to hop on to our next guy here. All right, so, yeah, this is... Uh, Project Modern Kitchen. <laughs> it's redonkulous. Yeah, it's pretty great. Uh, wow. Just more, you know, architectural visualization work, just high quality rendering, wonderful lighting, uh, just people stretching the engine into spaces that it doesn't necessarily, or it hasn't necessarily always been. And it's just really great. Just love some of the material work here. It's fantastic. Yeah, this is by Raphael. It's either Reese or, or Rice. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, but he's. If, you, if you've been keeping up with any of the Archviz work on the forums, he's posted multiple scenes. Yeah, this is like an internal favorite. We have yeah. a couple of email lists that some of this stuff gets bounced around, and people just like love this kind of stuff. So it's really, really great. Really good stuff. Like it makes me jealous. Like. I used to work, I used to do a lot of mod work and a lot of level composition, and I look at this and I'm just like, God. <laughs> Some of the things people are doing is ridiculous. So, it's good stuff. Very nice. Yeah. 
And this one's from our buddy Tom Lumen, who's got, looks like the first play test of his game, Switch. So he's been showing off some of these materials and some of the, the blueprint functionality of this in the forums for a while. But this is his 1v1 multiplayer, uh, I guess, play test on it where he's got two guys running around and basically creating and destroying the environment you know, as they see fit, as they go. So uh, really, really cool game mechanics. Um, I just, I, I love the way it looks. Everything just feels really cool. I want to play this. So as he jumps, lands on that, love that. Just so cool and goes right through that one. Just really, really neat. Look forward to seeing more from this guy. It's a pretty cool defensive strategy there too, to be yeah. able to throw a column or a wall up. Yeah, and just right in front of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. And see, like, he can jump. He needed a platform there, so he jumps and just creates it. Yeah. Boom. There again. Nice. Just really, really awesome. That's cool. It's fun. Also, it makes me a little jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and also, big thanks to Tom for all the tutorials. Yeah. He's Tom, a machine. <laughs> Tom has been great. Yeah, he's, he's sharing all kinds of awesome stuff. And then this one we found on the Ludum Dare and Twitter and forums. It's kind of everywhere. This is a game jam game called uh, Hexa Potato, and it was built out by, uh, let's see, guys from all over the world, basically. We had somebody from Germany, Netherlands, Ireland, um, Scott Baker, Peter Newton, um, user Luos83, and uh, Jan Kaluza. It's really, really cool. They built this in 48 hours a couple weekends ago. Uh, they all kind of, you know, split out their specific disciplines and and really made something awesome. I love some of the effects here. Like 48 hours, right? This is all made. Really, really cool. And I think this is even like their work in progress footage. I, I couldn't find a video that was the actual finalized product. I, I have the actual game downloaded, and, it, and it's great. So awesome, awesome work. And then one more. This one's not necessarily a video, but uh, we've got James Butcher, an environment artist, working on some, it's like a, gritty space scene, right? Like, just really, really great use of lighting. Let's see if I can hop in this a little bit more. I guess it's as far as it'll let me zoom. So, uh, just, yeah, really great use of lighting, really, really neat space aesthetic. Of, uh, we've seen, the, you know, in a lot of different games over the last couple of gens, but love his material work. Love, love the way the floors look. Love the way that the screens glow. Just really, really cool stuff. And James, is uh, he's also based at Staffordshire University in the U UK. He's one of the key people who helped us set up the partnership over there. And uh, he also helped us run Make Something Unreal Live 2013. So yeah. big props to James. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah, really, really good looking stuff. And he's got even more up on his site. So, oh, Also, he made this project available. Like, you can go download this from this forum thread. So anybody wants to see kind of how he put some of this stuff together, how he's, what parameters he's got on his lighting or materials, uh, he's made it available so you can pull it right down. So. Really, really, really cool stuff. Thanks a lot, James. Cool. And did you want to take a look at the PAX pictures? Oh, what? Since I've got them up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, since we're already cut over to the screen here, uh, Chance yeah. is going to pull up our PAX Prime photo album. You guys can go to our Unreal Engine Facebook page and check it out. So you can see here in the top left, that's Vince and James with Shield Break. So uh, we were able to announce Berserkers their uh, team-based multiplayer game for them, which is kind of like Chivalry meets Team Fortress 2. Yeah, I really want to play that. With Smash Brothers Melee and, <laughs> I don't know, a bunch of other shit mixed <laughs> in. It's in really there. good. Um, there was, we had awesome reception to this game, so that was uh, at our booth. Um, so yeah, I'm let's see, to yeah, keep going uh, down there. Donuts. Donuts. Right, yeah. <laughs> we sponsored, yeah, Epic and Unreal Engine, we sponsored the PAX Exhibitor Lounge every day of the show. So we made sure that um, exhibitors had top pot donuts and coffee and salad and sandwiches. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah. This people, people were very grateful because, you know, anytime you go to, like, work a booth yeah. at a show, you're used to, like, just... Be working the booth and not leaving and having See, a break or this is know. why Dana wasn't on the stream last week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah so I was just eating donuts. That's it. Um, oh yeah, go to the one next to the donuts of uh, yeah. So this one here. So this was right when we were first getting set up. So that is John with Kite and Lightning, the makers of Senza Peso, and Vince from Shield Break. So uh, Vince is getting to see Senza for the first time. And Senza Peso, the build, the Oculus DK2 build was released yesterday. 
So if you have a DK2, you should totally go download it. It's a beautiful cinematic experience. And um, I even retweeted a couple of the, the playthrough videos last night because it's so great, like watching people get their hands on it. And you can actually, like at our booth, you couldn't see what was going on inside the rift but the videos that have been released you can actually you can see all the different scenes and you can yeah. see how amazing it is yeah. but definitely check it out if you have a dev kit yeah that project uh, just looking at the their website alone makes me want to you know see what's actually going on and all that really, really yeah cool stuff. so so if you want the background so basically that you know uh, kite and lightning are three guys like they're Roots are kind of in the VFX and film space, and they spent two years making this music video slash mini opera. Very high production values, really beautiful, and uh, you know a lot of work was done in Maya, but they also had live action, and uh, you know they used lots of After Effects to cut it all together. Well, when the Rift came along, they wanted to bring the experience to VR, so they um, they dumped a bunch of the assets into UE4. And they've also found a way to integrate the live action characters, which is really unique and something mm -hmm. that I haven't seen other teams doing. So um, it's, it's just different. It's cool. Yeah, awesome, awesome stuff. Cool. Let's see. Oh, here's Dana with Paul Burr and <laughs> There's Zach <laughs> and yeah. Paul. Yes, we were all matchy matchy. Uh, Infinity Blade had some cool stuff in the booth. So, yeah, if, so I cool. don't know if you've seen the, um, the, the sandboxer action figures that you can print straight from the game, but that's what this is here. So basically you can pose your character in the game, capture that moment, and then tell it to print. And it will print your action figure, like your customized character in the, so in the position you want it. And, oh, Laura Mustard asked me, let's see, there was a promo going on yeah. for Infinity Blade right now. i got to pull it up. Yeah, you can keep scrolling through the pictures yeah. for a second. The interesting I'll thing about it. those is like, just really shows you where 3D printing is kind of absolutely yeah. kind of gone, right? Yeah. Well, it's it, it's amazing. It, it's it's like we can take things from these virtual worlds that you know we've grown up loving and living in, and bring them into our physical worlds, right? Yeah, you yeah. know, like mm -hmm. having a token of you know an achievement or something is really really cool. You get the connection with mm -hmm. your character yeah. too. It's really cool. Okay, so here's the thing that Chair wanted us to mention. Uh, Infinity Blade Three Kingdom Come is live today, and the game is also on sale for for fifty percent off, so that's their big final content push, awesome. and the game is half off. Um, if, if you check like Infinity Blade on Twitter, you can see the new trailer for it and all that good stuff. Yeah, and it just looks beautiful. It's mm -hmm. one of the best looking iOS games I've ever seen. Cool. It's really really good stuff. So yeah, there's the, there's also snapshots here of all the different Unreal powered games that we saw at the show, and this isn't yeah, even all of them. Like uh, yeah. yeah, you can just kind of scroll through. There's there's. Simon and Jess from Chair <laughs> Statuette. Wait, is this a 3D printed one? Or yes, that is 3D what? printed. <laughs> crazy? I hadn't seen one that yeah, close. Awesome. Wow, yeah. that is just awesome work. Awesome, awesome, cool. <laughs> I see Matt from Matt's asking on the string. He says, "Are the pictures of you, Rupert, and me oh, in yeah. this album? <laughs> they're, they're not, but." Uh, they, I did tweet yeah. from my personal account from the Dreadnought party. <laughs> <laughs> See how we got it. So, yeah, board, War Machine ta Tactics had a, a great-looking presence there. Yeah. Uh, Borderlands, the pre-sequel. Yeah. Good stuff. Gigantic. Awesome. There you go. Yep. There's, There's Joe, Joe and Jason Mangold. Joe and his beard. <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's more gigantic right there. Goat Simulator. And oh, and uh, so the Goat is awesome. Coffee Sand came by to play Berserkers against um, Shieldbreak at the booth. And I was talking to Armin, and he said that they actually have, they had Goat Simulator running on iOS and Android. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. I think they had it running like on device there. Yeah. yeah Take I, a goat with and they you. were also in the Plantronics booth. I kind of yeah. need that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Portable in my life. Mean sure. Greens, that's from Virtual Basement. Our buddy Ashton, Unrolled awesome. 4. You go to the next one. That's like a little, I took a photo of the screen. That's what a screen of like. the screen. Yeah, it's a screen cool. of the screen. Screenception. Oculus running some Eve Valkyrie. Oh, yeah. PlayStation. PlayStation. Xbox. Xbox. You know. Yeah, um, yeah. Joe from company. Deco Digital was there at the ID at Xbox stand, but I, I couldn't grab a photo because they were, like, rotating the systems. Cool. That Island 2. That Island 2, yeah. That was a lot of, lot of Unreal attacks. Uh-huh. Cool. Twitch. Oh, yeah. Twitch live stream. Inside of Twitch live stream. Oh, it's so Another meta. Another Inception. Cool. All right. Yeah, so that just kind of gives you a picture of what all was there. We just wanted to kind of share that with you guys. Um, you know, part of the value of, oh, yeah, that was a, a Zing, the land beyond. Up there, the, the flowery, the same glass looking okay. stuff. Yeah. Again, that was a picture of the screen, but gosh, what a pretty game. I actually yeah. did get to go and play that. They have it running on PC and on the Rift. 
Oh, awesome. Mm. It's cool. Yeah, so yeah. I set a banana on fire and I threw it in the lake. It's kind of random. <laughs> 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 I didn't have long to play. Yeah, didn't you say also that um, the Sensa game was a lot of people's first VR experience? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so we ran about 330 uh, demos through uh, Sensa Peso. And uh, for, I mean, I'd say probably 80% of the people there had never used the Rift. Mm. So yeah. it was really cool getting to see people experience for, for the first time. Awesome. Yep. So, real important, if you ever want to be showcased in our booth at an event, keep posting your work in that work in progress thread and hit us up on all the social media channels and just keep on our radar. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Good. So, Market Marketplace. Market, Marketplace is live, Yay. right? <laughs> yes, it is. So, yes, yeah. it is. We've, uh, we've been working really hard to get this out, right? It's been step by step to get moving. Deke has been the largest driving mm -hmm. factor, yes. the hammer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's been a long road. We uh, finally launched it, though, and uh, we're, we're pretty pleased with the results. I think you guys will be, too. Um, we can kind of scroll through uh, the, the launcher here. If you don't have it yet, by the way, definitely go out and uh, update your launcher and, and uh, get the latest version. Um, you know, the, the thing with the lead-up to launch is really figuring out what, we wanted, what content we wanted to launch with. Mm. Um, and that's, that's been the biggest challenge for us here. Um, we had some really good ch content to choose from, um, and we really want to make sure that we uh, continue to have a steady stream going as we move forward. Um, so what you're seeing there in the marketplace now, um, we've tried to uh, make sure that we have a, a good breadth of content available so that whenever you hop on, you'll be able to find a couple pieces that work together, you know, and really start to fill out your, your game with an environment, a character, uh, sound, music that, that would all potentially work together. And that's, that's one of our, our main goals. Um, first thing you'll, you'll really notice here is, you know, there's, there's a, maybe a smaller number of items on the marketplace to begin with that, mm -hmm. uh, that you would have expected. Quality is so important to us, and we really want mm -hmm. to make sure that yeah. we're hitting a high, high quality bar with everything that goes mm -hmm. on there. So um, it's very much a manual process at the moment. Um, it is, uh, we are physically getting all of the submissions in. Um, and when we get them in, we vet them internally. Um, we, we get together in a room and we actually look at the submissions that come in. Pretty we, much every one of them comes across. Like, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much every one of them. Deke and myself and a few Chance others. and I look at it. Uh, yeah. We have a few other people that help us with that. Um, and then we, uh, we also take it in front of, uh, you know, the leadership of, of Epic. We make sure that everyone gets a chance to look at things and, and kind of weigh in on it. Um, obviously, that's not a super scalable um, thing that is going to go on for the long term. But for right now, while we're really setting the, the tone and the, and the quality bar for the marketplace, that we, we feel that that's an important step. Definitely. Um, you've also, uh, we've, we've announced and put up on the Trello board the, uh, the, the ones that kind of make it past our initial filter so that people have a chance to vote on it. Um, that's another important step, mainly because we really want to understand kind of uh, what, what the community wants and uh, get a sense of what they kind of feel is Im important for the marketplace. Definitely. With that, we don't want to just push out a whole bunch of stuff that you guys don't find any value in, right? Like, we want this to be a place that you guys can go and get things that you can use that, that, are actual, that, that actually have, you know, a tangible value. Like, they help you make your games great. And so with that, we don't want great content to be just buried under stuff that is just coming through. And so that's why we, we carefully go through a lot of this. And then we turn it back to you guys uh, to kind of see what you guys want, right? And so a lot of y'all have been very active on the Marketplace Trello. Um, if you need a link to that and stuff, I can get it up, you know, post Twitch and everything else that way. But it's also on the forums. You can find it there as well as UnrealEngine.com slash Marketplace has all that info on yep. it too. Yep. So, And one point on that, I mean, the, the, we we are putting an extra amount of care into making sure that we, we have a good process set up. The, mm -hmm. the side effect of that is it takes us a little more time to get all the responses out that we need to. Um, we're really trying to improve that as hard as we can. We want to make sure that we are um, being as, as vocal and transparent about the process as, as possible, but we have had a couple of times where things are delayed in getting, uh, getting uh, either us getting back to you if you put in a submission or uh, us getting things up on the marketplace. Um, our goal is to try to hit a, a weekly release uh, for new content. Um, don't hold us to that at the beginning, obviously. Uh, we're still working out some of the kinks for that, for that pipeline. Um, but we do want to have a regular cadence of releasing new content and, uh, and really getting the best content that we can out there. Um, so we're, we're, we'll continue to, to work on that. And as always, we definitely want to 
continue getting feedback from everybody uh, on absolutely. the process. Yeah, I think whether we meet like at least once a week on all this stuff, right? It, it per team, right? Yeah, There's yeah. a couple of different people. Yeah, I'm, I'm actively in four this. meetings a week right now. Yeah. They'll probably increase. <laughs> that um, are, that are yeah. just about review of content, right? We're yeah. seeing all kinds of really great stuff roll in, I mean, daily. Like after we launched yesterday, we had like what, 10 or 11 just like within like just the next 15 in. minutes. Yep. Like, okay, great, here, here we go. And started going through and parsing and seeing what, what we've got and you know, moving on from there, so. Yeah, um, and you know, I think it's, it's important to let everyone know kind of where we're headed with the marketplace too. Um, one thing that we really want to make sure that we can do is make the process of finding the content that's on the launcher right now easier to get to. Um, so we're, you know, we know that there are some issues as far as being able to find the content quickly and easily. So we really want to improve some of that. You know, um, there's, there's no timeline right now for that per se, but we are actively uh, working on ways to help you get to the different categories of, of mm -hmm. uh, content that's on there. Um, yeah, and along, along that point too, we're, we're actively looking at the feedback that we see and you know, feedback for Epic Forum in the marketplace as you guys ask questions about specific things you know, that, that you know, we need better answers for. We, we've, we've made a lot of changes because of those things and so part of our plan moving forward does involve a lot of y'all's feedback, right? So please keep it coming. It's extremely valuable to us. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are asking about code plugins. That's one of the, the hot button <laughs> topics that we really want to get in the marketplace as soon as possible. Yeah. We have a lot of uh, hard challenges to solve to get, to get us there. Um, we have, uh, that is one thing that I'm going to be tasked with working on and trying to work with other people here at Epic to, to solve. Um, so we'll, we're, we're, we're trying as, as, as hard as we can to make sure that that is uh, on our recent mo roadmap. Yeah. Uh, try, to get, try to get code plugins in there. Right now, uh, we are able to support uh, content across the board, so uh, mm. we don't have blueprints actively in the in the marketplace, but they are in the pipeline. So we're we're working on getting those up and, and out mm. to you guys. Um, and then, you know, we've tried to fill every category that that uh, that we have uh, quality content for. So look for uh, you know more and more in each of those that are currently there. The Trello board has all of the active uh, content categories mm -hmm. as well. So. Um, we'll, we'll continue to add to that as soon as possible. Yeah, and talking about you know code plugins and stuff, we've seen a, I've got a lot of questions coming in on code plugins, and it's very much you know hang on, not quite yet. And yeah, thanks for your patience and all that stuff. I just want to let you guys know all the stuff that's coming in to me on the code plugin side is all fantastic, like really great stuff, really 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 awesome to see what you guys are putting together and what y'all wanting to share with the world, right? Like it's it's really great. So so keep them coming. Uh, the answer is yes, but not yet. We're still we're still working to get some of those intricacies worked out. Yeah. Cool. So uh, let's see this. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of poke around here. Yeah, if you second. want to scroll down a little bit, we can look, talk about some of the submissions that we we've already put in there. Um, the categories that we have in place now are are very much starter categories. We want to make sure we had a really good place to put mm -hmm. our existing content. Um, you know, the demos and tutorials at the top. Make sure that everyone knows how to get to those very easily. And uh, complete projects, those are still there and they will still be coming in. Yeah, we're not, we're not going to slow down on making stuff to give to you guys as Epic, too. And, you know, we, I think we mentioned that in, in part of the release as well, too, right? Like, we're not turning Marketplace over just to other people creating stuff. We're, we're, we still hope to add a lot of things in here for you guys to use, right? Yeah, and open these avenues to, to, the, to, the, to the community as well. Absolutely. Um, trying to figure out ways to do that the best way possible. Yeah, so um, we've got a bunch of stuff in here, like... Um, some of my favorites, just uh, the game textures pack. I mean, this is just wonderful. Just reference alone to be able to hop into these guys and see kind of how specific materials are made. Yeah, this, um, is, this one has been bonkers on the uh, Trello board as yeah. well. I mean, people just really love the content here. So that one got voted a lot. Uh, so did the sci-fi top down was mm -hmm. another one that really got a lot of a lot of votes and attention. Yeah, and uh, another thing too, one of the, one of the things that's on our roadmap to get figured out is some yeah. of these technical details. We're setting up some specific standards. I've seen a lot of feedback in the forums on, hey, it's hard to tell how many this, how many triangles are on this. This guy lists out all his assets. This guy does not. Those specific things, and so you keep that feedback coming to you. Those are those are things as we clarify some of our standards internally and how we want to move forward with next iterations of you know marketplace releases. Um, we take that, you know, we take that in, and we take that in our discussions as we review this stuff too. So yeah, that's a, that's a specific area that we really do. Uh, we have a standard set of questions that we are as, asking people now, mm -hmm. um, and would love to get feedback on that of of what's the what's the most important pieces of, of information you need to uh, to be able to make a, a decision of whether or not you want to download this content. Definitely. Um, one more thing. Uh, gosh, 
I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> you scroll all the way down at the bottom, yeah. you can see some of the things that are coming soon. Yeah. Um, uh, this is actually kind of, a, kind of a cool thing. On the far right, the Cliff and Rock set. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry. So this is, this is a user submitted. Um, this is our, one of our first pieces of content that is coming in from, uh, from, the, uh, from the community. Um, whether or not this will actually make it to the, uh, to the final marketplace, uh, we're, we're still kind of working that out with this particular person, but I just really wanted to have a good example in, in the, the coming soon section of, of uh, what types of content we're, we're going to put up there from the community. Um, so starting as, as early as, as possibly, uh, not this next week, but the week after, you're going to start seeing some of this, the community submitted um, from our submission board that we posted a few weeks back oh, yeah. uh, coming live. Yeah, and let me, I'm also going to, while we're on that note, if I can get this, I'm going to pull up the, we added that new section to our Marketplace Trello. Mm -hmm. So... Voting. <clears throat> so I'm sure most of you guys have seen this already on here that we keep updating, you know, as, as we get stuff that's, that's gone through, you know, some of our internal review stuff, we'll, we'll post it up here. Uh, we've added a new column here for promoted to Marketplace. So this is stuff that you can either see today um, already in Marketplace or that will be coming soon if you don't see it immediately. And, and these won't live on here forever. We'll pull ones off that have already been out for a while so it doesn't get too cluttered. But it's a good way for you to hop in and take a look and see what, you know, has moved from column, any of these other columns over to the main. So, and uh, every, every time we update this Trello, I, I'll update a post inside the Marketplace forum as well just to give everybody a quick heads up on new stuff that's there. Um, I know a lot of you guys don't really, you know, y'all aren't necessarily as interested in sound effects if you're a sound designer working in Unreal. So you might just want to see if there's new environments there. So if you check that thread, you can kind of see what shows up week over week. And try to get that up Monday or Tuesday, so you should see next week's stuff, hopefully on Tuesday. And a couple more things on the Trello board. There's, uh, it's, it's not exactly a, a science. Uh, there's a little bit of an art to it. Um, we're, we're learning that art as we go. Um, one thing that we found is uh, whenever we get new submissions in that made it to the public Trello board, we'll put those at the top so that things kind of naturally follow down. Um, we're also working out exactly how long things need to be in here to uh, actually get the right amount of votes or... or um, you know, the fair way of doing that so right. that we're not leaving something in that gets a lot of votes and then looks bigger than, than, it, than it may actually be just because it's been there longer than something else. So um, we're working all of that, that kind of things out. Really, the, the, main, the main thing we're trying to see here is, is you know, what are you guys interested in and, and what, what really do you, would you like to see on the, on the marketplace? Mm -hmm. So please get out there and, and vote on this board. That's, that's, it is very helpful to us. Yeah, and one, one other thing about that, if you guys have content to submit, you know, y'all have, y'all know the channel to go in and do that. It's also here, it's just, you know, submission form. Uh, one of the things that has held up a few people in these first couple of weeks is specific requirements. And it's like maybe a simple requirement that we, we just can't quite post yet until we get that information. So uh, if, you want, if you want to hop onto this Trello, if you want to get something moving through here, the best way to, to do that more quickly on your end is just make sure we get all the, you know, guidelines and the yeah. the requirements nailed out. I would really hate to see, and we've actually had this, we've had really, really, really great looking stuff that we've had to ask for more information on, um, which is del delays to get it up here, and so. Probably one of the biggest uh, challenges in that category that we have right now is we, we do need a, at least five assets in an asset mm -hmm. pack, and that's not a hard, fast rule, but it is one that we, we're trying to get as close to five quality assets per pack as possible. The main reason for that is just that we want to keep the value high um, yeah. We really want to make sure that people are able to uh, have something that is usable to, to actually go out and make a game with. Um, and, you know, like any of our, our guidelines, we'll, we'll continue to evolve those as we go. But for right now, that's one of the ones that's kind of been hanging a lot of people up and, uh, and, and just to let everybody know about that one. Cool. Yeah, so that's marketplace. Right. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. I know we have, usually have a Q and A afterwards, and I'm seeing a couple roll across the uh, the chat here. Dana, have you grabbed any? Or um, there was one I saw. Okay, you guys may have to post your questions again. Just preface sure. it with a big caps lock question in brackets. <laughs> um, I saw one about you know uh, prices tend to vary. Some stuff looks cheaper than others. Is that up to us or the developers? It's up to developers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's um. Th there are very few pricing guidelines that we have right like yeah all that's in the business terms fact yeah uh, you can you can see it there um you can uh, uh also feel free to um 
you know, uh, read through our uh, our standard EULA um, okay. that, that covers that covers that mainly. But really, we do want the developers to, to set the, yeah. the price. Be kind of in control of that, right? Yeah, one of the standard questions that we're asking people whenever they first submit is what price do you want to put this out mm -hmm. at? And, and that's that's what we're using. Yeah, because we don't know how hard you've worked on this. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The guidelines will go into a little bit of uh, the understanding of, of how to set price and what things to take into consideration with mm -hmm. price. And Dick, I'm not sure if you can speak to this, um, but uh, what are your plans to improve browsing on the marketplace as it fills up with content? Yeah. I mean, certainly what we want to be able to have. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the things like you guys are seeing are the things that we want to fix. Yep. You know, yeah. there's uh, obviously being able to get in and, and search for the things that you're looking for, being able to uh, filter the content. Those mm -hmm. are all things that we wanted to, to, to do, and we really had to weigh it out versus getting the marketplace launched. So right. um, we'll continue to evolve that, and the, the, the launcher team here is uh, they're, they're acutely aware of some of the, <laughs> the problems we have right now with that, and, they're, and they're, they're working really hard to solve some of those. So. Um, yeah. We'll try to make that as public as possible as we move forward, and that's mm -hmm. one of the other goals that I have is to try to really show some of the roadmap of where the marketplace features are coming uh, in the in the coming months. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say. I mean, I, I would have to tell people like if you look at the marketplace right now, what you see is kind of like Unreal Engine 4 was back in like March when we launched. <laughs> yeah, right? like, yeah. Like it's just yeah. like it's day two. We, yeah. We we want to. We don't want to delay getting it to you guys and then release a product, right? We would rather to, to let you have access to it as soon as we have something for you to work on. Uh, that way we can gather feedback and watch this thing grow into something that, you know, you guys want to use, right? We want the marketplace that you guys want. We don't want the marketplace that we all want all yeah, the time, right? Sure. So, that's it. Yeah, again, just keep that feedback coming because I, I'm taking it and we're, we're discussing it as, as uh, often as we can. Yeah. So cool. let's see. Uh, request section. We actually have a, um, yeah. what would you like to see from the marketplace forum thread that's fairly active. And uh, I've encouraged people that have asked me, what should I build to go check out the, what would you like to see thread? Because there's a lot of, lot of great info in there on people posting things that they want to see in here. And then content creators that want to make something and make them available to the marketplace can go in there and kind of find out what those are, create that thing if they have the skill set to do so, submit it up to us, and then it becomes available. So we want a lot of this to be driven by what you guys want, right? Uh, so that's, that's our current way of re requests. Um, if, if you have any other suggestions or feedback on that, Hit, hit my inbox, I'm happy to hear them. And that, and that solution really is like the Trello board. Like we want ratings in the launcher. We want, uh, or at least in the marketplace, we mm -hmm. want the, the, the ability to give feedback in, in right there where you're, where you're searching for and finding the content. Um, the, the, the marketplace section of the forum, the Trello board, those are all kind of kickstarts to, to these features so that we can have them now and then grow into them with our own, uh, with our own, own marketplace in the future. Yep. Yeah. Also on that request section, there's uh, asking for a certain color of rock. Um, most of these assets are going to ship if it's if it's an a, uh, if it's just a rock asset. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to get the material too. Yeah. So a lot of these materials, you can then at that point use the material editor to change things like colors and hues and you know uh, yeah. roughness, things That's like easy. that. Yeah. yeah, you'd yeah. be able to hop in and, and, and work on that. A lot of this stuff's going to be very flexible. In that Saw front. a question about um, about sales. Um, that's kind of an interesting point. Yeah. We, uh, the sales process right now is pretty manual. Um, so we, <laughs> we uh, are working to make that a little, little easier to... <laughs> Deke goes in there and pushes a button. To, to do. <laughs> and then comes um, back. Yeah, so it's a little, it's a little manual at the moment uh, with these hands. Um, hopefully we'll be able to move that into something that's a little more automated. The other thing that we're really interested in is uh, getting bundles in place so that we can kind of work on uh, you know, different, different ways of offering the, the, the content to you guys. Uh, I've got one here. Are there plans to include content from the example projects as easy to add asset packs as opposed to loading the entire project? Um, that's been discussed a little bit, kind of, you know, abstracting out parts of our yeah. sample content, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. be, being able to inject those into games. Yeah. I'm not really sure what's necessarily on our timeline or roadmap in that front, but uh, that's, that's, that's good. You know, that's a good idea and stuff. So I'll, I'll definitely take that internally and talk about it. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, one thing that we are really trying to do is anything that we, we present um, out to the public, we're trying to work on the pipeline that gets that on the marketplace as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, we're, we're, we're trying that. There's just a lot of, lot of moving parts with that, but that's, that's one of our other goals for the, for the coming, uh, coming short term. Yeah. We've got one here. What are our plans to improve browsing? We kind of talked about it earlier to, you know, be able to sort by specific mm -hmm. types. Yep. So there's a lot of things that we want to do, and we're still designing out a lot of these projects. So as we get these kind of feedback, you know, items back from 
it's hard to find things, you know, or as it fills, we're, it's certainly, you know, if you look at Launcher today, we are fully aware that this doesn't scale as we have yep. 6,000 assets in it, For right? Sure. So we, we've got, um, you know, we, we've got a team looking at some specific design things, and mm -hmm. we discuss this pretty regularly every week as we look over all this, so. Rolling down. Text cool. to voice plugin blueprint. Interesting. Uh, I mean, I would. So I'm looking at uh, the text to voice plugin blueprint on Marketplace. I think that might actually be a. Well, I don't know. Somebody could probably build that. Uh, yeah, I mean, if <laughs> yeah. you if it's a blueprint and, and a bunch uh, of sounds, those are acquire code plugin, then, then yeah. definitely put it put it in the submission. Yeah. Oh. Well, cool. Why don't we move on and talk about education for a little bit, and yeah. then if we can go back after we run through this, we can go back. If you have more questions, you know, feel free to start populating the chat with that again. So, yeah. education, like so, educational use or academic use of Unreal Engine four is now free. That's awesome. That's been announced. So, yeah, really if you great. go to UnrealEngine.com/education, that has pretty much all the info you need to get started. Uh, we can uh, basically what we're asking folks to do is uh, faculty or administrators with an academic institution can contact us through a really simple form on the website with uh, you know just basic information, uh, number of licenses they need, and we'll hook it up. So, yeah. So students uh, talk to your teachers. <laughs> yes, students talk to your teachers. Go bang on those doors. Tell them you want the engine. And, and we'll make it happen. Yeah, as a, as a former game student myself, I mean, especially these younger guys you see, with, got these great ideas and you know, all they need is you know, that uh, enablement, empowerment, just to go make something awesome, right? And so I, I think this is a really great thing, really awesome. Big, big fan. Yeah, and just to cover off on some of the FAQ type questions that I, I know that we'll get, you know, People will say, well, you know, what if, what if I get my, my subscription code through my university or my school? You know, do I get to keep it? Will it still work? And the, an the answer is absolutely yes. In fact, you can, you know, once you get the engine, you know, you keep what you download forever. It still works. You can still ship your game. If you're a student and you want to release a commercial project, that's totally fine. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about the $19 a month. If your revenue exceeds three thousand dollars, you know per game per quarter, then that's when that five percent royalty kicks in. It's just like you know, simple terms, same as everybody else. Uh, but you certainly can start learning the engine, do a class project, and then if you want to release it commercially, I mean, if that's cool with you know with your with your program, then you can do that. And it's a it's a great way to get your your foot in the door, or if anything, just to learn how to ship a game. Yeah. That's, you know, just a simple process. Shipping oh, yeah, just, just ship it. Yeah, just, I, that's actually, an, I think, four or five, the make game button. We've been yeah, talking about games, it, right? right. Deke, yeah, are we getting in? It's in QA. Got it, cool. Yeah. yeah. So, May um, not pass. <laughs> on that, yeah, I, I don't know it's fr from the fact, I haven't read all of it yet, but we've got one about small lab university with, like, three to five developers. Um, is this EDU... Uh, for us, or does it have to be an institutional level? So they're a psych, cognitive science lab. Uh, they would have to still go through their their school, right, to yeah. get to get them clearance and running on that. Their, their school just go on and request the number of licenses that you guys need. Mm -hmm. So via the unknownjacom slash education page, there's a little sign up sheet over here on the side. So yeah, it's not like this only applies to huge universities. Right. I mean, we're you know we we really want to get the engine into as many students' hands as possible. We want it to be a part of, you know, programs all over the, wor all over the world. So, yeah. yeah, don't hesitate to get in touch. This is another place where I put in the disclaimer of this is a very manual process It as is well. manual. <laughs> exactly. That was actually going to be my next thing. I'm like, oh, yeah. the words are coming out. But so, it's manual. Yeah, you know, you know how yeah. De Deke <laughs> is the, the key pusher on Marketplace? Deke is also the key pusher on education. <laughs> That's so. right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm actively offloading that to someone else. But, uh, but there is someone else like me that is going to be answering all of these emails. So yeah. um, have a little bit of patience, but do let us know if that is getting in a little bit longer than, than, than what is comfortable. Cool. Yeah. Um, 
This is a, I got a marketplace question real quick. Yep. Just before we forget it. Talking about, uh, will that have other elements in the marketplace, like uh, voice acting, offers a request, music, soundtrack, flash art. Uh, music and soundtrack is already pretty much mm -hmm. there, right? Uh, yeah, there's, there's no real uh, hard, fast restriction on the, the soundtracks or music mm -hmm. that we get in there. Just, you just have to uh, have the, the, the rights to use it. Um, you know, there's splash art. Uh, we've kind of gone back and forth on having a miscellaneous type category right now. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, if, uh, just definitely send, send it in and, and we'll, we'll work with you to see if a, a new category needs to evolve from, from uh, the submissions or not. That's kind of how we're building the, the categories in the marketplace now is what we get. And mm -hmm. if we get something that kind of doesn't fit in any of the categories that we have right now, we'll, we'll make that change. Definitely. Yeah. And voice acting, you know, it, Really, the marketplace has a, it, it can take in um, voice acting, it's just, or sorry, voice files because they're just sound files, and so we're already doing that. Uh, I don't know that we'll necessarily see a lot of that on there because voice ac acting is very specific for specific games. Um, it's less generic than, say, like a rock pack, right? So, um, but is it possible? Yes. I don't know that we're going to see much of it on there, though, because of that. Um, let's see. PayPal yeah. support for marketplace. Uh, PayPal is, should be supported, yeah. so we're, yeah. we're definitely cool. uh, working out any kinks that may have happened there mm -hmm. with uh, anything at launch, but uh, it should be supported. Yeah, yeah, all the payment forms that we take you know, f to, to purchase a, a subscription ought to just work yep. for a marketplace. Cool. Uh, can we get Zach Parrish on here to listen to his soothing voice? <laughs> Probably sometime. <laughs> Maybe we, we could even have him record a few lines of yeah. dialogue. Just so just, we'll just have to do that. We'll, we'll collect y'all's questions earlier, <laughs> and then we'll, uh, you know, we'll just have them record them, and we'll have to do it from there. So. Can you restate how students who are interested in education can use reach out to their universities? Yes. To have them contact us. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Have a lot of students contact us right now. Oh really? Okay. Okay. Great. So students, cool. we need people from your educational organization to contact us. We Correct. can't process a request that's directly from a student. It needs to be somebody from the school contacting us. And you fill out so, the form. yes, fill out the complete form, all the fields, and hit submit. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. We we had to make that clarification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it yeah, yeah it yeah go talk to your professor, talk to your instructor, and have them get in touch. Well, it's glad to see that there's already a lot of interest in yeah, education. Good, yeah. Right. <laughs> right, then we go live right now. Cool. Let's see what we got here. I think that about does it for things. Player preview for audio. I know we had. Those. Oh, that's another. Yeah, that's another one that we 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 certainly want to beef up the launcher on video and and uh, audio uh, playing right there. And as you're looking at the content, yeah. so certainly on our on our roadmap, I'll uh, I'll make sure that we're working with uh, with the the launcher team to kind of make make those features a little more visible to the to the community mm -hmm. moving forward. Hey, Chance, if people want to talk about the whole education and initiative in the forums, is, is there a place for that, or where would you recommend uh, they go? Yeah, and so in the forums, we, we should probably have an announcement forum post put up on that since yeah. the website just went live. We'll all yeah. get that after this, and we can discuss that there for now. Um, probably be the best place for it, I think. Okay, cool. So go to announcements for now. Yeah, there'll, there'll, be, a, there'll be a marketplace, or I'm sorry, uh, Unreal for Education posts there, and so if you, we want to talk through some things there, give us your feedback and questions, we'll take them on that point. Cool. Um, I got one right here. Uh, education for just USA or worldwide? It's worldwide. Awesome. It's everywhere. And uh, is it just college or high schools too? I, I mean, I think that we'll Executive process issues. stuff for, for high schools. If, I mean, if it's somebody from the faculty getting in touch. Right. I mean, certainly we just, gosh, actually at, at PAX, there was... Um, a panel with Jared Garrettson and the guys from Foundry 10, there were four high school students who had hmm. taken up UE4 and put together a cool project. Yeah, yeah awesome. let's, let's so, take that sir. back. I think, yeah. I think there is actually, it's, uh, is there, it's, it's colleges and universities at the so moment. So for now, colleges and universities. Okay, yeah, my bad. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, I let's blame it on PAX. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So we'll, yeah, so we should probably add that to the FAQ. Yep. yep All right. Good. I will update the FAQ on the website. Kindergarten, yeah, probably not. 
Though I do know a lot of people that got their start modding Doom levels when they were like 12. So We do not have this restriction at the marketplace. If you want to submit and you're a kindergarten student, Bring by all it. means, <laughs> submit. <laughs> cool. Yeah, cool. Well, I guess. As you also, yeah, so higher education, correct. Yeah, yep. higher education only yep. at this point. All right. <laughs> Anything else y'all want to talk about? You guys, if you have questions, keep posting them on the chat stream. We we have it up over here. What is that? What's the weird noise on cam? It's probably me. I'm <laughs> I am the weird noise. Oh man, is it my necklace or the <laughs> earring? Crap! I'm sorry. It's Dana's necklace. It's usually my eyes. And my Dana, Dana's fashion sensibility. I'm yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I keep my head over this way. Someone is vacuum cleaning. Nice. Cool. All right. Well, it looks like the questions are slowing down, so I think we're going to go ahead and call it a wrap. Yeah. If you have any anything else you want to know on the education stuff, check the forums in the announcement section. We'll post something up there. Marketplace, we already have a forum for that. And um, next week, for sure. So I know that we had mentioned, oh, there go the questions. Okay. Maybe we'll go for a minute longer. We'll, we'll see what we get. <laughs> So I know that, that we had mentioned something about uh, EGX. We were going to talk about that. I wanted to highlight all eight teams that are, are going to be on our booth, but it hasn't been announced yet from our, our UK PR agency. So next Thursday, for sure, we'll show you all the games that are going to be there. Um, we're also going to be doing uh, blueprint demos the entire time. We have a theater dedicated for that at EGX. So if you're going to be there, definitely swing by and get us. We'll be in between the, uh, the, like the student career section and the resed booth. Yeah. Cool. cool. See any questions there that we can, that we can answer? Uh, we've got some like uh, 4.5 and other things that are not marketplace or education related. We'll, we'll have to take them offline to get the right people up here that can answer yeah. them. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, do you get access to get GitHub code under the student license? Yes, of course. You, yeah. you get everything. Just like the the nineteen dollars subscription. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us on the Twitch stream today. Um, we we welcome any and all questions, and uh, we will see you next week. Yeah. See you guys. <laughs>